yeah, getting right into this thing. How would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, what is your work here in this life? Mm, yeah. So it was actually really interesting when you um, interviewed Lizzie because uh, she mentioned that a lot of light workers and angels work is to shine a light. And I resonate with that so much because whenever I've asked my guides, like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? They say, like, shine a light. And that comes through in so many ways and like so many different gifts. A big gift in my whole life has been singing, has been sharing my voice. And um, I have been able to channel that through Uh, sound healing work through energy work through creating music and creating these works of art that are intended as medicine but also something that can be very comforting and very much like home to people and I really enjoy creating a space for people through my art and through offering one-to-one -one sessions and quantum trauma healing parts work sessions I really intend to create a space where people can kind of just unravel and put everything down and really just ground into their heart into their body and a place where everything is really accepted where like every part of you can be seen can be loved can be held and I really, really enjoy working with people in that way and seeing how much that can heal um, because that's been a, a big part of my process is really accepting and feeling and working with every single part of myself um, from the, you know, the scariest, darkest, you know, most ugly parts of myself to the most, you know, divine, angelic and higher self aspects and I think the core of all that is really this kind of just divine acceptance and love in this current that flows through all of life. Um, so what I do when I work with people, because my biggest passion is working one-to-one -one and doing music and singing. So when I work one-to-one -one with people, I help them and guide them through healing really deep traumas on a multidimensional level and witnessing their lives transform, which is really, really gratifying. Um, and it's a process that I've been doing on myself for about five or six years and have began, begun offering in mentorships with other people and watching them blossom and bloom really makes everything worth it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. So healing on an interdimensional level right healing traumas is what you said how does that even begin what does that look like in a session could we even get into describing what that is like or is it more so um is it pertain to the person or is there like a general explanation you can give on what that looks like yeah absolutely i mean the universe is fragmented so when we think of like source like one source and we think of our human experience the whole experience of separation and oneness is you know this process of fragmentation of splitting off from the divine so our original wounding is that split from the divine is that illusion that we are separate yeah. so when we kind of hold that core truth and um, manifest through so, so many different like human complexities and human mirrors so when we experience a significant trauma in our life um, and a part and we cannot like, process the trauma in that moment, a part of our consciousness splits off and goes somewhere else and gets held. The ener energy gets held in our body, held in our um, energetic field until we're able to actually process it. And it will continue looping and continue trying to resolve what is it, what has you know been experienced in this trauma so when i work with people we work with the very basic human aspects of connecting with all the different parts of yourself and using the body as a map to finding you know where these aches and pains live where these parts live and using it to track where the core moment um, of inception of this energy was 
And sometimes that can be within other lifetimes. So like recently I had a client who has a lot of um, fear around the hospital and like a lot of trauma around being in the hospital, like very afraid. So we went in on a multidimensional level to work with that. And we were, you know, tracing it back, 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 back to the inception of this energy, to the core root of this energy. And we went into a past life of hers where this past life aspect of her experienced um, an abduction and had abduction trauma. So we were basically resolving this trauma from the other lifetime, which then um, helped her deeply heal and release a lot of that fear in this lifetime because we're all quantumly connected at all times with every single aspect of ourselves. So our soul incarnates into um, so many different timelines simultaneously. So my body is here, but in my another part of me is somewhere in the Amazons like 3,000 years ago. Um, and if I can make this quantum connection with that part of me, we can exchange gifts and exchange healing. And it's really like happens organically because it, a lot of things that we experience sometimes in life as a recurring trauma can also be something that we are meant to work with in a multidimensional level and work with through connecting to that other lifetime in order to resolve it for that other lifetime as well. So when we have the capacity to um, be held in that way. And the thing, the core difference with this work and like kind of hypnosis or um, other energy work where you're just clearing stuff is that I take clients through a process where they consciously, without any plant medicine, without any hypnosis, well, they're like a little bit of meditation, but like in, they're conscious in this process and they find the ways themselves to go into these lifetimes and experience these past lives like fully conscious, fully contained in this space, and then be able to come out of it within 20 minutes and like go along with their day or whatever they need to do because that, that's been my process and finding these this access point in my consciousness with this specific part of me, the, the gatekeeper, which I learned about through this um, community, this spiritual community, I think they're called Divine Self Embodiment, who... Um, taught me a lot about this process and when you make a conscious connection with this gatekeeper part of you who has seen all of your lifetimes it's a fourth dimensional aspect and they've seen all of your lifetimes they've witnessed all of your um, past life because the past and future obviously isn't real so all of your other lifetime traumas and things like that um, and they can take you consciously into them to heal and resolve them and you can have a relationship with this part of you that where you build trust and you build, you can communicate consciously. So like I have conversations uh, now that I've built this relationship over, over years with this part of myself, I'll get like, I'll know exactly when uh, he's trying to communicate with me and like what he's trying to say about, you know, he'll, if sp something specific happens in my life or a specific person comes into my life, he'll explain to me and then bring me into showing me um, where this energy is also happening simultaneously on another timeline. So the whole core of it is to unify our consciousness and unify all the fragments of our consciousness. And it really gives us this beautiful kind of zoomed out picture of everything because we realize like, okay, it's all kind of just this game that we're, that the divine is playing with itself. Like it's like playing dolls with us, you know, like, eh. um, so it's really fun because it's like we experience our human experience fully and we also know that like we have this amazing divine capacity and this divine energy surrounding us and holding us all all times in this game. Powerful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so where um, do you say once we do tap into this energy to the gatekeeper, the higher self, where this is leading the human incarnation. You know, once we clear the samskaras, as you could say, mm -hmm. uh, from previous lifetimes and other dimensions, how does that play out for your character here? You know, what does that look like when you are fully refined here? Do you become more selfless or like a servant, more loving, more compassionate, cooperative toward the human collective? Like, um, that's some ways that I would explain it, but how would you explain how this has changed up how you live your life entirely? 
Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely still have a, a long ways to go. <laughs> yes. I have so much like, um, but what what really sh started shifting for me when I um, began doing this work and have deepened more into it is that we become a lot more aware of who's talking and, and when. Um, I think a lot of our like inner dialogue, a lot of our ego, um, we can just be a lot more playful and a lot more aware of it because I... I feel that it's not necessarily realistic to eliminate our ego entirely. Um, and yeah. it's, I, I haven't been able to do that. I don't know anyone else who has. Um, <laughs> and, I'm, you know, Buddha has, but um, maybe I feel in where we are right now in our society, like it's important to not demonize um, the ego, but instead be aware of like what part is acting out at what time, who is talking when, and being able to have like boundaries with that energy and um, work to mature our ego consciousness and like cultivate our ego to become this kind of matured human expression that is, you know, can be of service, can be selfless, can be um, very devoted and devoted to serving God and like training all of these parts of ourselves because it's like you can have your inner teenager coming out and being like you know getting triggered by someone and being sassy and like being like oh i don't know like you know and you can yeah. be aware of that and be like okay like hey i see you like i see you like why are you acting this way like what's going on and you can kind of unfuse and have a lot more awareness and um, be able to set boundaries with yourself and have conversations with yourself. Whereas if you weren't being conscious about it, you would just be acting out that energy constantly. And I've also noticed how um, this is how quantum leaps happen is when we clear um, a trauma that's been in our body for a long time. So if we have like, you know, a childhood trauma or a teenage trauma that we keep attracting to our lives like the key, same types of people, same types of situations that we can't seem to break out of it. And when we really go through deeply in healing it on this quantum level and transmuting it through the body as well, because the body and the emotional aspect is so important mm -hmm. um, to moving it out. And after we have these big healing um, sessions, you can notice how like your life just literally changes overnight or a certain person just disappears from your life or you are suddenly catapulted into a completely new reality. And it just r reminds me how beautiful it is, how so much of what we're experiencing all the time is literally designed to help us grow. Yeah. And everything that is coming to us is coming to us to help us reintegrate. And every trigger that we have is is a really beautiful opportunity to explore deeper into why and where it's coming from and giving us the the chance to like really re reintegrate more of our core essence and really come deeper into the body. Cause that's been a big part of like my process this year is coming into the body more and more because when I first awakened, I was very much like up here and like, you know, astral yeah. projecting and talking yep. to aliens and like all yeah. this stuff and <laughs> which star seat am I? Mm -hmm. like all that kind of stuff. Um, but then through the process of deeper healing, like a lot of um star seeds as well, it's like a kind of a form of uh avoidance as well to be super in the crown all the time yeah because when we come deeper into the body it's like we have to literally work through the density of our physical body and our 3d experience and that's how we integrate more of that you know divine frequency into the planet is by literally rooting it into our bodies and and being able to hold it and being able to connect with the earth and be this bridge between the cosmos and the earth because that's essentially what we're designed to do and what we're here to do yeah wow we are the bridge between the cosmos and the earth. Yep. Sometimes I look at us as a membrane. Energy mm. passes through, you know, from the divine into the earth. It's like we are the uh, the transmitter of that. I feel that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. what you said is important, how, you know, you went to these higher realms. I think as we all do on the spiritual path to sort of escape the material world you know you see yourself as much greater than the body but 
you can't really stay there. You got to bring it back down, you know? No matter how high you go, you always come down. If you don't, then Mm. it's just sort of inauthentic because you have to honor this human experience still at the same time. Finding balance between our animal humanness and our holiness. I think that is truly the middle way, as the Buddha would say. And uh, yeah, it's the middle way for all of us to be able to do that. Incorporate the angelic part of us with the human so that the human finds a better way to express itself. Because right now we're at an imbalance, you could say the popular paradigm and when one is caught in the darkness and not the light, you could say, is very imbalanced, very egotistical. We're very body, we're very material, we're very animal instinct driven. So I think it's needed on the spiritual path for one at the beginning maybe to um, ascend or transcend that in a maybe a psychedelic experience or deep meditation or living in a cave or something like that. It's needed to do that, to just break yourself out of the paradigm. And then this is, I think, just part of the journey. You come back home to the humanness to find a sense of balance to to serve, I think, to ideally serve. Once one is refined enough, once one has, uh, I guess, grounded themselves enough into this angelic nature, you come to balance it out with the human nature. And then, yeah, just what comes forth is a beautiful, it seems like a dance, you know, everything Mm -hmm. changes. It's hard to explain. Nothing changes at all, but everything changes by how you look at it from this newfound state of seeing yourself, the, the holy transcendent, you could say. The human experience changes up, and you mentioned it. How it changes up, I feel, is that we see that it is designed for our growth. I don't remember exactly how you put it, but mm-hmm. it is designed and conspiring for our greater good. No matter what happens yeah. to us, it goes from why is this happening to me? Why? Why? It's always the same people, always the same situations. How? Why? To, okay, how is this happening for me? How can I transmutate this energy of the humanly plane into, uh, into I don't know, like I said, my, my greater good and so that I can flourish and live an actual happy, peaceful, joyful blissful life here in this human experience because that's what we're meant to do that's all i gotta say (laughs) um (laughs) yeah i had a question but i kind of went off the rails there let me think one second yeah absolutely i wanted to to mention as well because when you were when you were saying about how um yeah there's that tendency to like go off into the 5d (laughs) yeah uh, (laughs) And I think we we see that a lot in like the kind of new age community. Yeah. And I remember just thinking like, what's wrong with me? Why am I not like in the 5D? Why am I mm-hmm. not like transcended life completely? Yeah. Um, That's not the point. But yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, it's all, it's a really more important to, I feel, to be grounded and to be like interacting with with this world in a way where we actually can serve more people through just being authentic and being grounded and like living our truth and you know mm-hmm. also understanding like when to let sleeping dogs lie like when you're <laughs> around people knowing that just being around uh, spaces and activate with your energy activated you're changing the frequency of the world you're walking in so it's not even necessary all the time to be like super out there or super I I just kind of feel I'm seeing now this like greater balance of where we really are grounding the the practical and and grounding the practical and the spiritual and really bringing into service embodiment um, and being like a catalyst and activator for people without them needing to know all about all the spiritual lingo and all this stuff. And Mm -hmm. that's just kind of what I feel is like really relevant, at least for me right now, is how we are bringing all of our spiritual knowledge like into this 3D material world and into, you know, intending to bring it into every interaction we have in every way that we relate to the world, which is something that I'm like working with a lot as well. (laughs) Yeah. And not like separating ourselves out from it so much because like we are all ascending together Mm-hmm. And every person on earth is feeling it more or less. So I just I just wanted to add that. It just came out. Yeah, well said. I think that's the hard part. I mean, that is truly the work. I think when one taps into their sense of interdimensionality, 
you know, we transcend the body, that's only the beginning. When we see and mm. pierce the veil and we actually see it, we take the red pill. That's only when the fun starts. You want to call it fun. <laughs> that's when the game starts. And mm-hmm. then truly the journey is coming back home, coming back into the human and just loving others. It's that simple, man. It's the cliche, but you just come back home and you love and serve everybody here with the best of your ability mm. without getting caught in the competition, the old ways of the ego and just the darkness without getting caught in the darkness, man, being a, a beacon of light and Whoever wants to accept it, they can. Most won't, let's be honest. But as long as you live on that wavelength with the intention of love, essentially, that's really all that matters. And uh, it comes through. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like Jesus. You don't have to save the world and get crucified. It comes through in the the simplest, smallest moments, I feel, you know, when you're just out at the store or something and you hold the door for somebody, you smile at somebody in the street just have a conversation with somebody, ask them how they're doing, you know, just like the small interactions in our humanly life here. That's really where the light shines through. You don't have to mm. become Buddha. You come, we become our own Buddha. That's the thing. And all of our own journeys. And that's the beautiful part of it is we're all like becoming our own savior, but not in a grandiose lofty way. You know, it's such yeah. a, it's so simple and such a subtle path this path of love you could say and that's what's quite beautiful about that is we can all embody that in all of our own way billions and billions of different ways and different flavors to bring this about into our life you know Mm, yes exactly and i think that also just takes off a lot of the the pressure for a lot of people on on the journey because um it's like it's not it's not just up to you to save the world like we're all here together and we're all anchoring this frequency together. Yep. And we're that's the whole mission of like the 144,000 or like whatever you call it, like the Starseed mission. And it's like we all do our part to embody like the Christ consciousness and our part of the puzzle because each of us are going to have like a different unique gift and a different mm-hmm. uh, unique skill that we're going to offer in the ascension journey like maybe someone's path is to like be a politician and like go to school and and study and um work in that sector and they're a light worker and they're a star seed but they have to like literally muddle through the densest parts of the matrix yeah and like that is just as honorable and just as beautiful as someone who is you know hosting retreats and yeah. doing other types of things and i think that's really beautiful like that really grounded kind of like humble service perspective Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, a lot of like Eastern philosophy holds as well as like how you embody it in your household, in your work, in your day-to-day life without having to feel like you're the the savior, you're the one. It's like, (laughs) we're all the one. (laughs) We're all the one. (laughs) Yeah. Quickly, you have to say, I'm the one, but everybody else is the one too. I'm God, but so is everybody else. It doesn't really mean mm-hmm. anything once you figure that out. It's like, well, yeah, we're all God. So, okay. What's yeah. the big deal here? <laughs> yeah. And on that note, you don't even have to be like a politician. It can be a janitor. And you are the mm. best janitor of all time. You're serving and you're cleaning better than Buddha could clean whatever you're cleaning. <laughs> you are the Buddha of being a janitor. And that's what's so beautiful is for some of us, this embodiment is so simple. I really do believe that. I've had some conversations and connections with people, not necessarily in the depth that we're talking now, but just like this intuitive connection with people that I wouldn't even expect to be on this wavelength of love, servitude, selflessness, yada, yada. You know, like I think the Buddha mind, the Buddha energy, the Buddha field is prevalent. And if you're doing your thing, like if you're on your path your dharma it's prevalent in ways that you wouldn't even expect um so yeah i don't think you have to even be vocal about it you know you don't even have to be vocal about change i think if you're embodying your dharma svadharma then it just naturally changes up the world like that one janitor by embodying the heart might have such a resonance that it affects people through his work that just is Mm -hmm. like a butterfly effect 
and just trails off and changes the world somehow. Am I making sense here? You know what I mean? Like you Mm. Yeah, don't have I know to exactly start a podcast what you mean. or become a politician or get crucified or go 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. This The act of love is so subtle, but yet it's so powerful and however it comes about in this world. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's the beauty of it. It's the beauty of it, man. <laughs> Mm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Oh, it might sound corny. I say it all the time. It might sound corny and cliche, but it really is the truth. It really is the truth. It's like, This embodiment of love is, um, it's, it's powerful also, not only, not only for changing the world, which I think is where it leads to, but changing yourself. First of all, we save ourselves to save the world. So, Yes. you know, once you, you figure out that you are a servant, all of us, we're all servants here. It makes life just better. You're like, oh, this is what the meaning of life is. <laughs> this is actually what it's all about. Because aren't we all wondering that deep in our heads? Like, what is going on here, really? What am I? What is my purpose, right? That's something I feel as though we're all struggling with. What is my true purpose here? And when you find out in a general sense that we're all servants, we're all servants to the divine, which alludes to we're all servants to each other, it makes sense. It makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yes, absolutely. That reminds me of um, in Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, um, he was saying like, when you're trying to figure out what your purpose is, your number one purpose is to be present. Like Yeah. that's your only purpose is just to be present <laughs> in exactly what you're doing right now. <laughs> That's that's it. it. And that actually, it seems contradictory because there is, being present isn't really doing anything. You're not serving per se. But I would have to say, if one is actually truly present, natural servitude comes about. This will of servitude comes about in one's life. Serving ourself, but also serving others and how you serve yourself. It's hard to explain, but uh, a lot of people call it the zero point energy. From the zero point, it's not inactivity. It's not passiveness. It may seem like it. And there may be times where you do just be present and you meditate and, you know, home for 20 minutes. That's fine. But I feel like what comes from that is a new energy. That potential energy turns into a sort of kinetic energy that is in the form of servitude. I think that's the buzzword of this conversation. Do you Yes. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And it's also so beautiful that when we are healing ourselves, we actually are healing the collective Yeah. in a lot of beautiful ways. Um, and there are so many beings who I know personally and myself who who take on a lot of the collective energies and just like transmute them through our bodies. Like um, Oh, yeah. just Mm hmm having built up this Um, capacity to be able to, to transmute so much energy and so quickly it's like okay give it to me like give give me the energy I will transmute it and repurpose it into something that is beneficial and something that is divine and something repurposing it into love and, and well-being and it's Mm like -hmm. every drop in the bucket in our collective bucket makes a difference Yeah. So like even if, you know, I've been in, in times in my life where I've just been like holed up and like healing all day, every day Mm -hmm. and being like, how am I being of service right now? But actually like, you know, going into that cave, going into that dark night of the soul and going through it and healing it and, and moving it and is really does make a big difference because if we all collectively are doing that work and collectively... uprooting these patterns and releasing them and transmuting and you know deprogramming ourselves more and more then we are making a, a big harmonic and, and frequency difference and like we feel like we've already tipped over the edge like everything's going to be fine like even though it looks like everything is kind of getting darker and, and scarier and everything um we've are like the light has already won the light already ha like always has won Mm -hmm. and um like one of my uh friends and teachers has this like god the god is great like <laughs> i believe in the power like god that god is great and nothing that the you know dark side or perceived dark side or whatever can do can really stop like what's happening for all of us on this planet and what is going to just continue gaining more and more
um, even just the past couple of weeks has been such a upgrade energetically. I don't know if you felt it, but Oh, yeah. um, I've definitely felt like, oh, the level of purging, the level of depth that we're going to um, is really beautiful. And it activates and it triggers everything around you. Um, and I feel right now really called being in Lithuania, like to work with the energies of this land and the grids of this land and really just anchoring this frequency here. And the divine like moves me a lot to different places to anchor and heal specific frequencies on, on this grid, on these grids. And, you know, feeling how, um, how much that that work is yeah like literally transmuting through your body and holding the frequency and holding the density and from an outside perspective it may look like what are you doing like you're just like crying all day and like <laughs> <laughs> meditating uh -huh. like what are you actually doing but it's yeah. like actually we're we're doing really big work um so it's like so much is going on in the unseen and the seen realms and yep. so many uh, like ama amazing um star seeds and uh, like you know master beings who are you know just completely unseen and mm. assisting all of us in this perspective and yeah. we're all you know like serving each other like you said like serving the divine which is essentially serving each other on this earth yeah yeah it's a great purification that's going on right now I also see it as like a spiritual war that's going on. It's within, mm -hmm. but also without. Yeah. And I do feel like we fight it in ways that aren't necessarily like classical warfare. We fight it by purging energy within ourselves, And then that just bleeds through to the collective. You know, you ever heard yeah. stories of people in the in Tibet? And they just all day, they do chanting or anywhere actually anywhere mm -hmm. you can meditate but these people that are just dedicated to the spiritual path they're like on the front lines <laughs> you know yeah. the, the front lines are within you know it's like yeah when you do when you do these practices this purging the purifying of oneself i do fully believe that it has a greater effect to the uh, the energetic sphere of earth the morphogenetic sphere of earth i really do believe that because we are just of the earth so it probably means so much you probably don't see it but mm. it probably means so much to the collective once we all do our work in all of our individual circumstances it reflects probably not even instantly it probably even takes time you'll never even see it you'll probably never even see the fruits of your labor but that's not the point <laughs> but I do believe that yeah. there's that war is being fought within, but it also is reflective without. It's pretty easy to see. It's pretty simple to see. There's so much turmoil and change going on right now. And it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like the light is going to win. But like you said, it already has. That's the thing. These are the last death throes of the darkness to try and mm -hmm. delay it. Because that's all it can do at this point is delay its own death. The darkness, you could say, the ego, it's only delaying it. And that's all it can do. But the light has won, for sure. Jesus told us that <laughs> way back. Mm -hmm. He knew. And any other sage knows this, too. Like, you you already know that the war that has been fought for millennia, probably since the beginning of time, it's already been won, man. And uh, I don't know. It's like, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. It truly is beautiful. <laughs> Uh, might sound corny, like I said, might sound cliche, but this is real stuff, man. I really think this is what's really going on here. Like what's really going on at a very deeper sense past the point of what CNN will tell you or Fox News or anything that you see on the screen. What's really going on here is some kind of energetic warfare that is playing out yeah. before our very eyes and not even in our, our, our eyes, our, our third eye. It's playing out and it's already actually been decided and it's crazy. It's crazier than star Wars and star Trek and Lord of the Rings all put together. But it, I really do feel that that is what's happening. We are involved in some spiritual warfare and the end of it. It's the end of it. Yeah. Moving in toward a different time, right? Moving in toward heaven on earth. Do you think this is where this is all going? Truly creating a, a heavenly realm on earth, a, a golden age. Mm. 
you know? Yes, absolutely. And like, it's like how there's no way that God cannot win because like everything is God. Everything is this yeah. divine consciousness. And like, I think the most compassion we need to have is for the beings who are so lost in darkness mm -hmm. that they've completely turned away from God because, you know, they're going to have to go through the biggest, <laughs> you know, process of, of returning because it's inevitable. And like, it's just this magnetic force that's going to pull everyone yeah. back into it. And it's the pull. It's like, I feel yeah, the pull, pull back to yeah. God. Mm -hmm. And although we feel like the trembles and the earthquakes and everything, it's like uh, we're being trained as star seeds more and more on how to hold steady and hold our frequency and hold our center so that we can be that beacon for um, for others. And uh, as you're saying that as well, it just occurred to me as well it, um, how important it is for us to be in our root chakras um, more than anything because a big part of the warfare is that we are disconnected from our actual sacred divine bodies and um, disconnected from feeling the intelligence of our bodies and the ancestral wisdom that our body holds. Uh, because everyone talks about, you know, activating your third eye, activating your crown or whatever, but I felt that, at least for me personally, recently, the most um, groundbreaking has been you know, activating that root and feeling truly rooted and, and grounded into our body's experience. And especially as women connecting to our wombs and the power that our womb has and um, just the incredible wisdom that we have as we tap into our body and our soma and release all of these um, trapped tensions in the body because our body is essentially manifesting our experience. Um so like mindset, of course, is a, a part of it, but sorry, there's a plane. <laughs> I don't even hear it. You good? Oh, great. <laughs> um, but yeah, our body is is what is truly manifesting and attracting and creating our reality and for women as well with our, our womb space. So this has been a big uh, focus for me. This year has been working through the body um, and upgrading my body because it's mm. felt like I've worked through all these different spheres of like the emotional body, the light body, and now coming into the the physical, like actual physical body and ascending through the physical body and doing so through womb work, through somatic work, through upgrading my water source to drinking only like living alkaline water and investing in a Kangen water machine, which has been like groundbreaking for me as well. What is that? A Kangen water. I don't know what that is. It's um, <laughs> it's actually really important technology. I feel like for um, all star seeds to know about, like have on your radar, um, because it's very much like a new earth, um, like business and technology where it's essentially um, like cellularly structured water. So the water gets restructured into the form that our cells are actually able to absorb the level of hydration. So we're actually being truly hydrated for the first time in our lives because the normal water that we drink, the molecules are, are too big to actually enter into the, through the cell wall. So this um, it's like electrolyzed ionized mm. alkaline living water. So it literally um, brings this <laughs> magnetic electric charge into our body and into our cells that then begins this in intense like detox process within our on a cellular level on you know a fascia body level a somatic body level and it's just been such a fascinating experience like feeling my I feel like every single one of my cells be like <gasps> wow. breathing in this water because so much of our experience and life is water like yeah. we're constantly we breathe we inhale exhale water our everything in our body is moved in water our brain lives in water we are water. um so yeah, we we are water and our universe is all water as well. So it's just been really fascinating diving into exploring the the power of water and how when we change our water, we change our our bodies and we have the power to reverse diseases and reverse aging and um release inflammation and all these different things. So it's been really supporting this process of like you know, um because yeah, bringing bringing the body with us in the ascension process. Because mm -hmm. as we're drinking the water, we're just naturally 
detoxing and releasing everything and making more space for the light to come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Taking care of the body is huge. If you have a diseased body or just generally unhealthy, none of this is going to make sense. That's honestly step one, I would say, is get healthy, get somewhat healthy in order to be able to um, have this energy flow through in a healthy manner, to be a healthy membrane, <laughs> as I said before, Yeah. to, to you know, to, to just be healthy, man. You got to be healthy. So what would... um. What would be some recommendations to be healthy, you know, Mm. to, to cultivate um, just a, a body that is capable of bringing in the light? Yeah. So I, I love that you mentioned that because health is wealth, essentially. Yeah. And when we don't have our healthy and working bodies, that's like the only thing that we pray for. <laughs> like Yeah. when we're not healthy, that's the Uh-huh. only thing that we want is to be healthy. And I know for me, like before I began my healing journey, um, I was so unhealthy and like even, yeah, I was so, I was constantly getting sick. I was constantly getting like inflammation, infections. My immune system was so low because I was caught in this state of fight or flight in my nervous system and my body was holding so much trauma that it was just like ugh, completely compressed and like couldn't even breathe, couldn't relax, couldn't let it out. So Um, a lot of diseases really can be healed through, um, you know, healing work, through somatic, you know, parts work, quantum healing work, um, you know, healing on all of these different levels, the light body, emotional and physical body level, because a lot of them can be, you know, energy manifest um, diseases like dis-ease. So it can be emotional manifestations that happen in the body. I was reading in the... in the Silva mind method, mind control book, how um, cancer sometimes manifests after an experience of profound grief. Um, and when, you know, grief isn't, you know, hasn't been able to be processed, it can sometimes manifest then as a uh, cancer. Oh. Wow. So definitely, yeah, the, the mind body connection, the emotional body connection is, is really huge in Yeah. changing our health. Um, because after I started my healing journey, I found that I rarely get sick anymore. Uh, I don't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> like All these different things when in the past I would constantly be getting all these sicknesses and diseases. And so I think my, you know, obviously the my first tip would be begin to work with your body, begin to heal, begin to work with your traumas. Um, and then, you know, little by little cleaning up your diet, cleaning up your lifestyle, But I've even found, you know, in at certain points in my life, I've, you know, had a super clean diet and like not no sugar, no gluten, vegan, whatever, all this stuff. And then I was still like depressed and anxious and being like, but I'm doing everything right. Like I'm exercising, I'm eating healthy, I'm doing all this stuff. But if we're not like constantly being so honest with ourselves and and so authentic with ourselves, we're going to manifest disease because like when we're, yeah, when we're living outside of our authenticity, we can manifest um, that disease and imbalance in our body. So definitely like the health physical aspects of taking care of our body, seeing, treating our body as a sacred vessel, constantly checking in with our body, like just, you know, every hour, like I have an alarm on my phone for every hour to like stop and check in with my body and be like, hey, like, what do you need right now? Do you need water? Do you need food? Do you need to rest? And then actually doing what your body is asking of you. And and when you start to talk with your body, your body will give you so much insight, Mm -hmm. yeah you know, asking the body, how do you feel about this person? How do you feel about this situation? And the body will tell you. And then, you know, if you listen or don't listen, you'll, you'll see in your life, like kind of what, what happens with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well said. Uh, I think an important part that you also mentioned was what do I do with this person? A huge part of our diet is our energetic diet and it relates to the people that we hang out with. That's Mm-hmm. just the truth of the matter. You know, birds of a feather, birds of a feather flock together. So if you're with the wrong flock, you're going to start to take on the habits of the flock, man. And I think anyone can attest to that. I used to hang out with people back in back in the day. <laughs> I used to hang out with people. All they did was drink alcohol. And then what did I do? All I did was drink alcohol. And I was at bars. And I said, wait, wait, hold on a second. What am I doing? Why, why am I 
hanging out with these? Why is this even a thing in my life? And I figured out it was an unhappy, unhealthy pattern that I was, uh, that I was creating for myself. And it was, I'm not blaming the people, but that's just, that's just how it is, man. You got to recognize who to hang out with and who not to hang out with. Surround yourself. Mm. I would say this is up there with healthy food diet. Surround yourself with the right energetic diet of the individuals in your life to the best of your ability. And I know a lot of us, we have to be sometimes in situations with people and individuals that we don't want to be with necessarily. And that might just be part of the test, you know, part of our path. But to the best of our ability, put yourself in situations with the right individuals that have the right energy, the right vibe. And you will see that you will change for the better. If not, then you will probably change with the tribe that you're hanging out with. So this is why I do this. I try to tap in with like-minded individuals and, and uh, you know, just kind of just hang out. <laughs> just hang out and have yes. some good conversation because I feel as though it's, it's contagious in a way, you know, the, the vibes that we bring with others and community, it's contagious, you know, like attracts like, love brings love. So just, Finding out, even if it's a very small amount of people, but finding out who is real and mm. keeping them in your life is very important. That's what I would say. Find the right people, man. Find the others, as Tim Leary would say. They're out there for yeah. sure. And now that we have the internet, it's easily accessible. So there's no excuses. You got to find the right people, man. And I'm not saying, I'm not blaming anybody else. I don't want to seem arrogant or try to patronize others. But the truth of the matter is... <sighs> If the truth of the matter is, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this, <laughs> is uh, not a lot of people are on this wavelength. And it could be, if you don't know any better, detrimental to your growth, your happiness, your joy, just from the, the sheer ignorance, you might catch their ignorance a little bit. So just that's mm -hmm. it. That's what I would recommend is find the right people. Also, yeah, I, I'd like to say sorry. I, I, mm -hmm. if, I know you're yeah, gonna say go something, so but one second. <laughs> also, in terms of energetic diet, uh, the media that we consume, right? Yeah, we're, we're surrounded with technology. So if you're surrounding yourself with horrible movies, music, especially, or just anything mm. on here on this the matrix, the literal matrix that we have built up, if you're just taking in ignorance, that's what's going to be in your brain. That energy is going to be in literally in your consciousness so surround yourself with these positive vibes these positive energy this good energy of the dharma of truth in the media that we consume we definitely it's hard because there's algorithms and we're susceptible to certain algorithms that uh, feed us certain topics and things that aren't for our best good but we still have the freedom to seek out the real you could say so that's what i would recommend as well um so yeah do you have yes. anything else you want to say to that <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. absolutely um yeah 100 percent agree with that and oh it's still a struggle for me like as well completely disconnecting from the devices and you know just being aware of like okay i'm i'm going down i'm going down <laughs> and just like <laughs> having the awareness to pull yourself in. back the black hole yeah doom scrolling yeah it happens I guess um, as long as you can recognize that, you know, that's better. You're already, not that it's a competition, but you're already miles ahead of anybody else if you can recognize yourself getting sucked into the black hole because a lot of us get sucked into the black hole and we think this is just the norm. This is how it's supposed to be. You just go on social media and that's the way of life now. And you get sucked into these paradigms mm. and narratives that aren't yours and you start to believe in them. But since you can yeah. recognize that, in this moment, I think that is actually, you know, you're on a good foot. Yeah. And I suppose for other people, it's like the news and, and things like that. Um, but also wanted to mention when you're speaking about, you know, like finding your tribe, mm. um, a part of that process and, you know, finding your tribe, finding your soul family is like also getting really okay with being alone, Yeah, um, which is like something I've had to learn many times on my journey is like, you know, <laughs> you have to be so okay with just going into your hermit mode and going into your cocoon 
and accepting that, you know, maybe there isn't going to be people around who resonate. Yeah. But if you continue to hold this for yourself and you continue to hold your frequency, that you will find those people. And even sometimes going into like, you know, 3D situations, like hanging out with like nor normal people, I guess, quote unquote, like you can still hold your frequency yeah. and hold your presence and like not let yourself get taken in and sucked in. I, I mean, it. I feel like that come skill kind of comes after the time yeah. of being by yourself and yep. being able to really anchor into yourself. But then you can kind of go back into the world and you know, be authentic within that space. I mean, that's kind of something that um, I'm experiencing now, like being in Europe, which is a very different uh, like kind of culture and society um, and like figuring out like, where do I find my people? Where do I like fit in here? Because there is a lot of that. Um, yeah, it's like very kind of a little bit more reserved, a little bit more like, you know, less outwardly spoken about these topics so i'm kind of figuring out like where can i hold continue holding my frequency be authentic and like the people who are going to resonate are going to resonate and people who are not are just going to like be projectile vomited out of my life yeah. like how it has to whoever be whoever is not is not meant to be there but the more core important thing is to maintain this relationship with ourselves and you find the tribe like even if it's just people who connect with online and mm -hmm. you're not able to be in person with them all the time, you know that they're there and it can be that really beautiful shift because I know how um, isolating it can feel as well when you're awakening and then maybe the people around you like aren't and you're kind of like, well, what's going on? Am I going crazy? Like, am I the only one? Like, what is happening? And then um, once you find those people who validate you and who resonate, it is just the most like comforting feeling in the world and you know, even like I have a little like group chat of people with people where we just check in every day and we're like, did you just feel that blast of energy? Like, yeah, I did. Like I'm having these symptoms and like me too. So we are, we are building this and a big part of this transition is going to be about community yeah. and how we can show up in, in community and like, it's a, it's a muscle, like it's a practice because it's going to, it is challenging to become a, a cohesive community and in integrity and authenticity and everyone honoring their own needs and the needs of the collective. Um, so like, as we learn more about that, as we get more exposed to that in like real life situations and coming up against our own triggers and our own boundaries, because it's very easy to stay Zen when you're on your own and you're <laughs> just doing your practices and there's no one around to trigger you, but when you're back with your parents, you're back with your family, or you're with your friends, or you're with people, your boss in the world, and then um, even in spiritual communities and things like that, people will trigger you. And so knowing how to deal with that and how to integrate that and and hold that um, is so important. And to be able to communicate just in a kind way and just, you know, really navigate those situations with, with grace, I feel like is going to be going to be a big learning curve for all of us <laughs> yep i agree for all of us for sure mm. i would say the greatest attribute of community and what it brings to an individual on this path is being a reminder that mm. you're doing the right thing that this is real that you're not crazy because if you look for that reminder through the matrix through the darkness a popular paradigm, the countless narratives that are sown for us, you may think you're crazy. So having these communities and having these, for me, these conversations with people, it's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm, this is actually it. This is the truth. So I think yeah. every teaching, really, every, um. Every way that you can remind yourself of this so-called truth within is valuable because there's countless ways that it will try to suscept your mind that this isn't the way. You know, the world, yeah. you could say, it's just this count. It never ends, man. Living oh, in the yeah. Western world, 
if you're actually not living in a cave, which nobody is, <laughs> I don't think anybody's really living. If they're listening to this, they're definitely not living in a cave. There Yeah. are countless ways that would, the, the darkness will try to suck you back into the black hole. So yeah, community is important to just have you realize that this is actually the way. This is actually how one is supposed to live. And we all have our own dharma. We all have our own karma, our own stuff we got to work through, our own samskaras on this path. But I, but I do feel there is a there is a commonality between all of it. There's something we share. And I think what we share is the sort of rejection of the ignorance of the world. We can all share that. We can all share like, yeah, that's that's not, that ain't it. I like to say, you got to realize what isn't it in order to realize what is it, you know? Yes. That's just that's just my point of view on that. Every teaching, every um, conversation that I have like this, every time I read a book on Dharma or listen to a video, it's just a reminder. It's like, ah, oh, yes, of course. Oh, of course, of course, because I'm not perfect either. I get lost in the sauce. You know, I get lost in the the BS of the divine play of Leela, the illusion of Maya, you could say. So... Yeah, the point of my story is every community, community just serves every time that I tap in with the community as a reminder for me. And I think everybody else as well. Yeah. 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 Cause each, each person has such a unique gift and a unique way of seeing things. And when we can really have the curiosity to um, be interested in, in each other and hearing each other and seeing each other and knowing that there is not just one correct way to do things. There's not just one way to reach enlightenment and we can be open and and ready to hear out everyone everyone around us and and ready to, yeah, just like deepen into that intimacy and that vulnerability and putting it into practice. It's it's a beautiful thing. And yeah, I feel like that's that's our future because obviously, you know, society now has us all so isolated. All us, all of us, like in our little boxes by ourselves, Yeah. so think, looking into our little boxes and thinking that we're alone. When in reality, we're meant to be living in community. We're meant to be, you know, with all of the beautiful and ugliness that comes with that, and and you know, holding that space in, in tribe and the vulnerability of that of being seen and, um, yeah, because it's very easy for us to hide. hide behind um you know our masks and and who we think we are and our spiritual ego and and different things that can happen and come up so it's really beautiful and really humbling when we when we come into like real raw community and, and sharing space and i'm i'm excited to have more opportunities for that and and see more of that happening <laughs> Mm. Yeah, amen. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, it already is happening. Think of the times we're in. Such interesting times that we were born into. The fact that we're even just able to do this. It's wild. It's a miracle. You're on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. We're having this conversation. It truly is magic. The fact that we can have these virtual communities, even if you don't have anybody in your real life that you can tap in with the fact that you can even do this that's another hallelujah seriously Yeah. yeah Yeah. it's um yeah it's it really is beautiful it really is wonderful to be able to do this stuff like i said it's a reminder every time i do this stuff it's a reminder it's a remembrance to come back home it, it truly is um yeah i have hope for the future I have hope because we have amazing people like you out there doing your thing and many others. I imagine if anybody has listened this Thank long, you. thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thank you to anybody that listened this long too. I feel like you're definitely one of the real ones for sure. If you resonate. Um, yeah, I really do have hope. At this point, it's about quality. It's not about quantity. of the individuals that are on this path. So if anybody has listened this long, you are part of the quality. <laughs> I do believe that we're all, we are few but mighty. And uh, 
Yeah. I encourage everyone that is part of the few and mighty to utilize these tools at this point because this is truly magic. We are living in magical times. We take this for granted because we have it in our pockets. We have 4K cameras in our pockets and I can FaceTime you at an instant and talk to you or Zoom meeting you at an instant. Mm. And we can talk like this where we're in the same room. So this is the lifetime, I like to say. This is truly mm. the lifetime for us to flourish and to us to truly ascend and become enlightened. If not this lifetime, it wasn't any time in the past. There have been Buddhas in the past for sure, but they're few and far between. I think this is the one for all of us to become the beings that we were supposed to be. If you want, you don't have to. That's the beauty of it as well. So I guess my yeah. closing statement, unless you have mm. something else to say as well, is uh, use this technology to your best advantage for yourself, for others, to find the others, and kumbaya, your life will get better. I suspect. I don't guarantee anything, but if you do use this for your greater benefit, your growth, personal growth, soul growth, you will find a definite difference in how you feel altogether, how you live altogether. And that's mm. that's it. That's all I can say. I can just be a testament that I, I feel it. Do you feel it? Maybe that'd be my last question. Yeah. What is the difference for you? You know, do you definitely, is this isn't all BS that we're talking right now, right? Do you feel a definite difference in your life before you decided to be on this path into now? Oh, yeah. A world of difference. Yeah. I mean, I'm a new person every day um, because of my commitment to my inner work. And I have felt how prominently since you know beginning of 2020 especially was when i felt this is the time to commit fully to this path and mm -hmm. make this path make this my life um and make this my lifestyle and make this my choosing and the amazing gifts that god has given me as a result of that is never ending because um at the end of the day like i when i know that my intention is pure and my heart is pure, and I want to serve good in this world, then I am always going to be good with God. Like, I'm always going to be good with myself. And, you know, even if someone misinterprets, misinterprets that, or um, even if I die, like, I'm not even, I'm not afraid of death at all. Like, I just know that I will return back to that place that I know so well, and that is home, essentially. So, it makes all the difference when we can uh, begin to really break out and see everything for what it, it truly is and everything from this greater perspective. And the love is the the most important thing yeah. out, out of all of it. <laughs> feeling yeah. the love in our hearts and feeling our, our connection to source. And, you know, sometimes I've recently I've been so overwhelmed by love in some moments that I'm just mm -hmm. like, I feel like I'm completely being torn apart in like the most beautiful ways. Um, and it's the most important thing that we can do right now. So, you know, even throughout all of our, you know, 3D life or whatever type of lifestyle we're leading that we maintain and hold this embodiment of love and know that that's the, that's the purpose. And what you said with the technology as well, like, um, you know, like I think of uh, Jesus, Yeshua and, and his community and how, 2000 years ago they were like literally being stoned and to death and like um attacked and um persecuted in such violent ways for you know speaking this truth these truths and embodying this frequency and seeding this love frequency that you know for 2000 has taken 2000 years to be able to begin to manifest more so it, it just, you know, proves to us and like, I'm not, I'm not Christian. I'm not religious or anything. I, I just have a personal relationship to these beings because they're ascended masters um, outside of the story that religion has put around them. Yeah. Um. So it's like, you know, we are here to seed and hold the frequency and even if that means like losing our lives or or not seeing yeah. the new earth manifest in that lifetime i'm in this lifetime i'm perfectly okay with that not seeing that happen because i know that 
what I'm doing now is seeding it for those who will come after me and, um, you know, my descendants and the earth's descendants. So it's beautiful to really have this responsibility and to hold it with honor and to really honor ourselves and, and know our power as we move through this world and, you know, shining our light unapologetically, no matter however that means for us personally. So I just urge every, anyone listening to this um, podcast to re remember the in, insane, <laughs> unimaginable power that you have within you really? and this connection that you have with God that is innate, that is the most natural part of who you are and that's always available to you. Um, and, you know, even if you go, if, you know, a whole month and not even feeling your heart and then you feel it for five minutes, that is worth it. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And it's all part of the journey. So everyone, we're all exactly where we are meant to be right now and living exactly the experiences that we need to heal and integrate. Um, and we're we're on this path and the, the light has already won. It's already winning. And we just, you know, can surrender and continue holding that light. Amen. Very well said. Thank you. Seeding the frequency. I like that. I'm going to remember that one. Yeah. Mm. Seeding the frequency. Yeah. That's good stuff. I feel that. Yeah, once one does live on this wavelength, death doesn't really hold as much weight. Mm. That's, as you mentioned, the examples of the past. They live for this truth, and they died for this truth. All of the disciples of Jesus were put to death, executed, mm -hmm. except two, I think. I don't know the exact, no, I'm pretty sure it was most of them, at least, that lived and died for this truth. And I think that's what's really important about this. It's finding a purpose in life that transcends your life. What more do you want than that? Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Powerful stuff. Seed the frequency, everyone. Well, I appreciate you for coming on here. Soleil, did I say your name right? Yeah, Soleil? that's good. <laughs> okay, good enough. Well, I appreciate you coming on here. You're a beautiful soul, beautiful person. Um, keep doing your thing. Thank you. And yeah, that's that's it. Keep doing your thing. Anyone that listened this long, keep doing your thing. And that's it. I wish you all the best. Peace and love to you. Peace and love. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me on. And um, I'm just going to mention as well where people can find me if they want to yeah. hear more. Um, I have also, I have a podcast called the Starseed Network Podcast um, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to listen. Um, if you're interested in one-to-one -one healing sessions and mentorships, that's available through my website, um, sauleilonavida.com, which is kind of hard to spell, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you, know, you can like link it below. Yep. Um, and my Instagram is the same, and I have original music on Spotify and all streaming platforms that are all very much encoded with um, the frequency of healing and love and, and positive intentions. So awesome. if you want some extra music for your playlist, um, mm -hmm. it's all there. So yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so much. And, and thank you thank so much you. for having me. I'm so honored to be able to share. Of course. Yes, go listen to Saleh. Saleh. Saleh's mm -hmm. <laughs> music. It's quite beautiful. It truly is. You have a really nice voice. I'm surprised we didn't talk about any music in this because I have a fondness for music and the resonance of music and the power of music altogether. Surprise, but maybe mm. in another conversation. We can talk Next about episode. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, thank you for coming on here. Peace and love to you. I will put everything down in the description and that's it. Peace and love. Amazing. Thank you.